Lee with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. I am live and I am excited to be here with you guys. Happy Tuesday. It's always fun <laughs> to be here with you guys on Tuesdays. If you have just shown up in the chat, please let me know that you're here and where you're from. Oh boy. Lots of stuff going on here. <laughs> Let's see if I can get myself up here and running. I always forget to silence um, my iPad, which I monitor my um, <laughs> comments on. So sorry for that little bit of noise. Hey, John, thanks for being here. Hopefully um, people will start popping in. Hey, Laura with Inked Fingers. Yes, this is um, something that I saw from a demonstrator. I think she's in Scotland, but she is not a current Stampin' Up! demonstrator. She used to be a demonstrator, and she's pretty cool. So um, I took what she did and Kellyfied it <laughs> and made it my own. So I hope that you like my version of this split card with Lattice. Um, I thought it was a perfect um, one to do for this stamp set because the flowers kind of look like they could vine and lattice is always used well with that. All right, so let me go ahead and start some um, announcements and hopefully people will start popping in as we go. Hey, Lee, thanks for joining us. Jasper is in here today. For those of you who don't know who Jasper is, he's my daughter's bunny. And so he is with us. So if he gets a little rowdy, uh, it's really him, not me. <laughs> so let's start with Paper Pumpkin. You have until February 10th to subscribe for the Sunshine and Smiles Paper Pumpkin um, kit. And it will be mailed out sometime after February 10th. Um, it had a set of dies that was the first time they ever added them on and I am going to show you them tonight So these are them. They came in this cute little package, but they are sold out Sold out today. They sold out. So I Did announce that we were having them and here's what they look like You have the little frog and the little flowers right here that cut out those two stamps in the stamp set That's going to be in this paper pumpkin. It coordinates with a set that's in the mini catalog But all of my paper pumpkin subscribers that subscribe with me I purchased those for you guys as a thank you. I just wanted you to know that I appreciate your longevity with me and um, these will be coming in the mail with your customer card that I mail you on a monthly basis. Hey Lou, thanks for joining us. So those dies sold out, they're no longer available and I know the kit hasn't even showed up at our house but they go live as soon as the kit is available for order. And so that's why I let you guys know ahead of time. But I did, like I said, purchase them for my subscribers under me. So you guys are all safe and you got yours. The set that coordinates with it, let me grab it so that you guys can see. It's on page 51. There's a whole suite of products actually. <clears throat> it's this suite right here and it's gonna go with that paper pumpkin. So if you have this suite of products, it works really well with the kit, so you can use bits and pieces and parts of this suite with the Paper Pumpkin. And the add-on stamp set that's in the Paper Pumpkin is a fantastic addition um, to your paper pump to your actual kit in that um, mini catalog. So let's move on. You guys know how much I love Paper Pumpkin, but I also love our kids collection. And the kids collection is amazing. Um, it basically is kits that you can purchase. This one is my new fave. Um, it's only $13, you get nine cards. They're all thank you cards. Who can't use thank you cards? I think I use that the most of any kind of card. And hey, Rita, thanks for joining us. No, no problem. Oh, negative eight. My goodness, that is too cold. <laughs> all right, so the saying things kits kit is super fantastic and so um 
yeah get it because it's awesome and when it sells out you'll wish you had it um this is a really fun one and for $13 you can't go wrong it doesn't have a stamp set or an ink pad but it does have nine really fantastic cards where else can you get nine really cute cards for nine uh for $13 um don't forget about the love treats kit that is still available we have timeless greetings and the birthday card organizer so those are other ones that you may be interested. It is celebration. And guess what? Today is the last day of January, which means we only have one more month left in celebration. So if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber under me and you would like to purchase a prepaid Paper Pumpkin subscription, I recommend that you go ahead and do that because you are going to get freebies out of this catalog just for subscribing to Paper Pumpkin. Hey, Eileen is meme watching. So don't forget about subscribing or getting your prepaid paper pumpkin. If you don't know what that is, hit me up in my email. It's always linked in the description below and I'll be happy to help you work your way through that. Um, also, if you send me an email and I've never emailed you back before, please make sure that you check your junk because sometimes emails go there and I would never ignore you. So I want you to know that I'm not ignoring you. Um, you will have an answer in your email. Also, if you ever leave me a comment on my YouTube, I do go and answer those. So um, check back to those videos that you left comments on that you might need an answer because I do post them there. And if you don't have the bell listed on your notifications, um, go ahead and click that so that it doesn't have a little slash through it. That means you'll get notifications from YouTube. That means if I respond to your note, your comment, then you'll get a notification about it. All right, celebrations over. Well, not over. We have one more month, but the st stamp set that I've been using this whole week is beautifully happy, and it is from the Celebration brochure. It's a fantastically pretty stamp set. Here it is, and I did a card, an easel card, on Sunday, and this is the easel card that I did, and it stands up like this, which is always fun. Here's the inside. And if you missed this video, check on over there and um, get a little view of it. I also showed an, infor an informational video on Monday, which shows you what parts and pieces of the stamp set that you need to put this little card together. So let's watch that as well. It's not very long and it'll give you um, some information. Rita, thanks for watching that and giving me some comments. I appreciate that. All right, so today we are using the um, Beautifully Happy, but I paired it with dies that are in the annual catalog. So I'm gonna show you the dies. They're called Meadow, and they go with a stamp set called, oh gosh, what is the name of it? I think Quiet Meadow. Yeah, I found it. So they go with this stamp set, but you can see how easily this this die set can go with Beautifully Happy. So Beautifully Happy, you can't purchase, right? You can only get it free. You have to spend a minimum of $50 in the US to earn Beautifully Happy, I mean, sorry, $100 in the US to earn Beautifully Happy for free. So as you're tacking on your items to hit your $100 level, this is a fantastic option. Um, it is located in the annual catalog, let's see what page, 172, it's $38, and it has these gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. I'm going to move this catalog out of the way. And you can see there's one, two, three, four, five flowers, and then this really pretty greenery leaf, which I've used on our card. This is the card we're gonna make today. So the greenery die is here, and on the inside, I have made one of the flower dies as my accent. So I'm gonna show you how to use that, and tomorrow I'm gonna have a video on these dies, so don't miss tomorrow, bright and early. I also love this fantastic label die that is in that set and look at how beautiful it is. I'm gonna bring it really high up to the camera so you guys can see. Isn't it gorgeous? Hey meme, thanks for watching. 
All right, so let's go ahead and move this stuff out of the way. Oh yeah, by the way, the paper inside is the Brights collection. But if you go to my website, inkyhandswarmhearts.com, I always have every product that I use to make the cards linked. So there's a demonstrator by the name of B.B. Cameron, who used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and no longer is, but she still makes cards for other card manufacturers. And she made a card on Instagram and I saw it, I thought it was fantastic, but I wanted to kind of Kellyfy it a little and make it something that I would make for me. Um, I changed how she did hers and I have chosen to, um, put paper on the inside of mine and did a couple different things than she did. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how to make this card. So the first thing is we're using a piece of basic white thick cardstock and it is four and a quarter by 11 inches. So I've cut it and you can still get two pieces. You just cut it the opposite direction. And I'm going to go ahead and use my Simply Score to score it because it is super thick. Our basic white cardstock is thick. Um, the, the thick one is really thick, so I like to go ahead and give it a score mark with my Simply Score tool. So I'm going to score it at the five and a half inch mark, and that's going to help me get a really good score on there. So let's move that out of the way. And let's go ahead and use our bone folder and we are going to burnish the card. Oh my gosh, Rita, you need that Quiet Meadow set. It's fantastic. You will love it. And you can get the dies and then you can get your freebie here, right? And then you have everything to make this card and more. I love it. I've also linked three videos that I did with the Quiet Meadow stamp set and Meadow dies in tomorrow's video. You'll get the links for those so that you can see um, some other ideas to use those Meadow dies with. I try and give you guys lots of ideas. That's always my greatest intention because I want you all to keep stamping because that's the fun part, right? That's why we stamp because it's a stress reliever and it makes us feel good and we love to make pretty things. So. Let me show you what we're gonna do next. So now we have our card folded in half and I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I'm gonna trim off three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna bring this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna lift this up and we're gonna put our paper in. And actually, I don't think it was three quarters of an inch. Let me measure because I get myself uh, worked up here and excited. I think it is two and a quarter. Yeah, I think I, I think I wanted it a little higher. So we're gonna, we want two and a quarter inches left at the top, okay? So since it's five and a half, to get two and a quarter inches at the top, we need three and a quarter inches cut off the bottom. So I'm gonna show you with my ruler that I have cut three and a quarter inches off the bottom. So here's the top section. So we're gonna go ahead and put this at three and one quarter inch. And we're gonna cut this piece off. So now we have our card and it looks like this with this little flap, okay? So the next step is I wanted half inch lattice pieces. So I'm going to bring this piece over and I'm just going to slide it to the half inch mark. And there's one, two, three, four, And one more, five. Well, let's make sure I keep it straight, people. Gotta keep me on track, guys. <laughs> I get a little wild. All right, let's see, there we go. All right, so there's my five half inch pieces. Now the piece that I have left is not enough to get two more half inch pieces. So I'm gonna put it in at the halfway mark in between 
these two pieces here. So I'm going to find my middle section, which happens to be 3 eighths of an inch. So one, two, three eighths on both sides. I'm going to place this little piece in between that piece. And we're going to do two pieces at 3 eighths of an inch. If I can keep it from moving, I will. My hands are a little bit stiffer than normal today because I had my nerve study done on my hands and I'm in quite a bit of pain but I was not gonna quit our our live tonight so here we are <laughs> all right so here's my two three eighths inch pieces and I'm gonna put those in a separate place they're a little narrower as you can see from my half inch pieces so I'm gonna put those off to the side and let's move our cutter out of the way Okay, so now we're going to build our lattice, and this is the fastest and easiest way to build our lattice. So I like to use a low-tack tape for artists, and so when I bought mine, it was purple, but now they put it on a roll, and it's way better, but I'm still going to use this one up until I don't have any more tape. So I'm just going to put a piece here, and I'm going to bring it down, and then I'm going to cut it at the end, okay? So I've attached that to my underside here of my card, but I think now it's white colored. I just need to use up what I have first before I buy any more. So I'm gonna grab another piece here and I'm gonna hold this down so that my card stays closed, okay? So I'm gonna stick it to my surface, okay? Now I'm still moving because my card wants to pop open. I'm gonna go ahead and put two more pieces of this low tack artist tape on either side here to hold it down and hopefully it's gonna work because it is low tack so it doesn't stick fantastically great but there's the basic premise okay so we're gonna take these pieces the half inch pieces and we're gonna lay them leaving a little gap and I know it's hard for you guys to see this because it's white on white but I'm gonna stick it to this middle sticky piece and I'm gonna put one here And then I'm going to put the next one and the next one and the next one until I have all my pieces aligned. And here's my last piece. We're going to place that. All right. And we have it as even as we can possibly go. Now, these two pieces here are going to be my two attachments on my lattice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my multi-purpose glue and I'm going to figure out where I want my line to be. And I'm just going to put a little dot and I don't want to wiggle these too much because I don't want them to move. I'm going to do it on both sides approximately the same place but you know give or take this is a handmade card the more the merrier <laughs> all right so we're going to take our piece oh I forgot to put I forgot to stick it up here too we need a little bit up here all right and we're going to lay our strip I'm going to hold this down now and I'm going to put it about three-eighths of an inch, about the same width as this, all the way, and it's gonna stick out at the bottom. So I'm just gonna press that into place, and we're gonna do the other one. Three-eighths of an inch, approximately. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, like I told you. Listen, the people who get these cards, they probably don't make them, and if they do, they will really appreciate what you've done and not worry about the mistakes, right? But the people that don't know how to make cards, they're going to think they're fantastic. So don't sweat the mistakes. Okay, so now I have my lattice in place. And I'm going to go ahead and move this low-tack tape on the sides. We're going to get rid of it because it doesn't really stick a second time. But the one, the newer one, is not quite this low-tack. The white one, it will hold. So I'm pulling this off the back. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you that I've created my lattice background. And then I'm going to trim this edge with my paper snips right along this edge right here. All right, so there's my lattice. Now I know you can't see it again, so I'm gonna slide 
this piece inside, I really wanted a pop of color behind my lattice. So I cut this piece three and a quarter inches tall by four and a quarter inch across. And this is from that paper that I showed you, which is the Brights collection. I chose to use daffodil because that's the color that we're using for our card. But before we get into all this, I'm just gonna, I just put it here for you guys to see for a minute so that you could see that lattice. Isn't that neat? Thank you, John. So that is the lattice background. Now let's go ahead and get our other parts and pieces ready for this card. I'm gonna move our low tack tape. Again, I will link to this tape um, in the description of the video so that you can get some if that's what you want. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see how we're doing. Thank you very much, Eileen. Okay, so we're gonna grab our regular basic white cardstock and we're gonna grab our beautiful image and we're gonna use our Tuxedo Black Memento and we're gonna ink up, I'm gonna put it here so you guys can see what I'm doing, our very large floral image. Okay, and we are gonna stamp that in this left-hand side here. All right, so there is that piece. And then we're gonna take our small flower, which I gotta find it. So give me a second, I have, I've been making videos this week and so I have a little basket next to me. So I have to grab, um, all my stamps, but let me clean this one first. And we're gonna go ahead and clean that. Oh yeah, I forgot I put the small flower on the back side. See, good thing I cleaned it because I wouldn't have <laughs> I wouldn't even have seen that. So here's the small flower. So let's move this over. We'll ink it up, and I'm gonna stamp it upside down. So I'm just gonna. I like to put the ink to the. It just is. I don't know. It just works for me. But if you don't prefer, don't do it that way. I'm gonna stamp this one over here in this corner. All right. So there's our two flowers. Let's clean this one off. And now I'm gonna show you how to fill in your flower. So this is a two-step stamp set. And so I'm gonna show you what that means. Let me pull it back out. So you're gonna have your outline and then you're gonna have your pieces that fill in the color. Same with this one, you have your outline and then you have your pieces that fill in that outline piece. And in the video yesterday, you can see how to actually stamp this and how the stamps work. So I made a little template and you guys will see all of this on my website and on my video. So you have your outline stamps and then your pieces to fill in. And so these are located in that video from yesterday. I know Rita watched it. I'm not sure if anybody else has watched it that's on the live tonight, but um, it's, it's a real game changer in learning how to use this stamp set. So we're gonna start with our daffodil and we're gonna color our flowers. So I'm gonna grab my flower set and I put them on the same stamp, but I have this one here, which does the upper flowers. And then this one does that single flower that we've stamped over in this corner. So we're gonna start with the upper flowers first. And I'm just gonna go ahead and ink that up. I'm actually gonna take this stamp off so that you guys can see a lot better without it in your way. All right. So I know I'm going down to the bottom here, but it's just because I need to see a lot easier and I can see when it's a little farther, a little closer to me. So hopefully you guys can see, I'm gonna ink that into my daffodil and then I'm gonna line this up. And this set actually is very forgiving. So we're just gonna make sure that we have all of our pieces lined up. I'm kind of hovering before I press down. 
And then once I'm happy with the placement, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a press. So there is our flower colored in. Pretty fantastic, huh? And I love that it has light and dark. It has shading in the stamp. That's why you see all of those little marks in that stamp. It's shading that's already in the stamp. Stamping up makes us look like artists, I'm telling you. All right, I'm cleaning my stamp. Let's go ahead and put that other stamp on here. Let's put that here. All right, and we're going to do our next flower. So I'm going to ink that up. And we're going to do this one over here. And I'm going to line it up and hover it over the top. And then when I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to press it down. And there is our small flower filled in. You could see it even did this little bottom section the tr of the trumpet. And then this is the green part. And then this little pod is the green part that hasn't opened because there's a flower in that pod. So before I put away this daffodil we're going to stamp the centers which i have to find those all right so this is the center the small little stamp here is the center of this small flower so i'm gonna ink it up and i'm just gonna stamp it just a few times i want it to be darker so that it stands out so i'm just over stamping it until i get it the right color and then i'll show you guys one more time so there it is. Hey Clem, thanks for joining us. All right, and now we're going to do the inside of our other flower and it's a, another stamp. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, ink that up. This stamp set also has a bumblebee, which I didn't use this week, but it's just self-explanatory. I'll stamp it for you guys so that you can see it, but we're not gonna use it today. Unless you guys really want me to use it, and if you do, I'll go ahead and put it on the card. <laughs> All right, so let me clean that. I'll stamp him so that you can see him when I raise up that. Um, the bumblebee's really cute though. And I love that the set comes with a bumblebee because of course, if you had these flowers, bumblebees would be in your garden pollinating, right? All right, so there's the bumblebee right here. And there's the center that I overstamped until it was dark. Now we're gonna do these parts in the green and I'm gonna show you how that one works. We're gonna use Pool Party. That's the color that I chose for my green for this card. We're gonna start with the small flower first because it's easy and we'll get it out of the way. So we are gonna stamp the pod and then this piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that in my um, pool party hover, the stamp right over the top. And when I'm happy, I'm gonna press that into place. You can see that I have my green. Now you do have to use, if you're gonna do your stem, you do have to use a Stampin' Blend or an ink and a blender pen or some form to color your stem. So I'm gonna go ahead and color this one while I have it out. All right, and let me clean my little flower here. Do we want the, um, do we want the bumblebee on this card, guys? Let me know. If you do, I'll, I'll, we'll include it. I'll do what you guys want. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the leaves. You can see them right here. So I'm gonna ink them up. and I'm going to do the large leaves. So there are these four right here. And again, line them up, hover till you're happy, and then let them fly. There's your greenery. Now we're gonna do this pod right here. It's okay, Clem, I'm just happy you're here. Glad you made it. All right, so let's go ahead and get our little pods up here at the top, same thing. It's also gonna color this greenery underneath this flower on all of under this these two flowers and then the pods. It's all one stamp. And I love how well they have um, 
chosen to match these up so that they you can fit all these surfaces and I just think it's a phenomenal two-step stamp set. All right. I've heard nothing yet about the bumblebee, so if nobody wants them, I'm leaving them off. But if you guys want them, I'll color them for you and move it, put them on our card. All right. So now we have our card colored in. Let me close my ink pad. We're gonna use bumblebee once more, but for right now, we're gonna sit and I'm gonna fussy cut. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and get this piece out of the way and we'll separate the small and the large flower. We'll start with the small one. And you're just gonna fussy cut around. How's everybody been doing? You guys have had a good week. Almost to the end, then on to the big guy. All right. Oops. I don't mean to cut that so sharply. Round that a little. There we go. All right, let's move on to the big flower. All right, no bumblebee it is. Thanks for saving me from fussy cutting him, Rita. <laughs> my hands are tired today from that nerve study for my carpal tunnel, but pretty soon I will have that surgery and the next thing you know, it'll be over and then I'll be back to normal again. So you guys will have to bear with me until I get through the process, but um, nothing's gonna stop me from crafting. I love it so much and uh, no matter what it takes, we'll get it done. I'll still give you some projects and ideas and things like that. Um, our lives may be a little bit different because I may not be able to craft with you, but I can record ahead of time before um, I have the surgery and possibly we can all chat while I am doing the, um, the live stream as a premiere instead of as a regular live stream. So there's some options, which is great. I love that I that YouTube gives me those different options and um, it should allow me to be able to continue to bring you content and ideas because if I can't do that, I, I would be sad. One of my favorite things to do is um, do some stamping and enjoy the whole process of uh, start to finish creating and making projects because I just love the joy that it brings me to create and the joy that it brings you guys when I share my projects with you. So I'm so grateful for you guys. All right, we're almost done. We're working our way through the hardest part to fussy cut if you, if you fussy cut like I do, which is to the extreme. <laughs> Hi, Malada. thanks for joining us. I'm so happy that you're here tonight. I showed how to do this really cool lattice split card technique, and you'll have to check it out. Um, I was inspired by BB Cameron, who is used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, no longer is, but um, she did a similar type card, and I really liked it, but I wanted to change it up a bit and share it and use it with this fantastic stamp set that you can earn for free during... Um, celebration and in the next few days here guys i'm going to have a video for you of february's card in the mail um class card and stamp club in the mail card class so if you guys are um interested in taking a class in the mail from me um you will definitely have to check out the video that shares how much it'll cost and what it works and i, I always do three or four options for you so you'll have to check that out 
it'll be posted around the same time as my normal videos are. So if you regularly check my channel for videos, it, you should see it fairly easily. We're almost to the end. All right, home stretch, last set of leaves here. All right, let's get all the little speckles of cardstock out of here. All right, so there are our pieces. We also have die cut this from the Meadow Dies. It's this die right here, okay? And then this flower right here is what's gonna go on the inside. So I'm gonna grab my scrap piece and we're gonna color it with some blends. And I'm gonna start with my pool party. And this is the flower that's on the inside right here. I just wanted to give you guys a point of reference. So we're gonna go ahead and color. I'm gonna use my bullet tip, it'll be easier for me. I'm not as precise with my hands hurting from that test I had done today. And tomorrow I'll have a video and teach you how to do this. I'll also link to three other videos that I've used the Meadow dies with, and one of them I actually used a different way to um, color the images, so you'll have to check that out. Let me know what you think. I always appreciate the comments that you guys leave. There's no dies for this stamp set. It's a free stamp set, Clem, so there are no dies for it, but it is worth fussy cutting. It is a beautiful stamp set. These dies here work perfectly with it, but it does not cut out the main images, of course. All right, so there's our um, pool party, and let's add our daffodil. Jasper has decided to um, chew on something. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but he is so fun. He's my little um, ambassador, my stamping ambassador. <laughs> He's our little mascot, right? Gotta love you, little Jasper. If you guys didn't get to see him, I showed him on a live a few weeks ago. He's so fun. I showed him at the very beginning of a live. So if you um, missed that live, you can sneak through all my live videos until you see the one where I'm showing this bunny. <laughs> All right, so there's our parts and pieces. So here's our card. Let's start by attaching our um, piece of bright six by six designer series paper to the inside. So I'm gonna grab my silicone mat. You guys know I always need that because I am a messy, messy girl, especially when it comes to wet glue. Hey Lou, when you watch me, does Craig have to endure me or do you go somewhere where he can't hear? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and place this on the inside. I'm gonna make sure it's lined up along that bottom edge. And I will have to um, trim off. I was overcut because I don't want it to be too short. So see why I use the mat? Because I am a messy girl. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for a minute while we're waiting for that. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my thank you. I gotta find my thank you stamp. It's over here somewhere. There it is, <laughs> right here. And we're gonna do that in the memento. So this font I think is super pretty and it is included 
Let me stamp on that scrap paper first because I think I oversaturated my stamp. I did. Time to clean. I felt it. I felt that I was getting too excited with that ink. All right, let's try again. Let's ink that up and be a little more gentle. All right, there we go. So we're gonna put that in the middle here. Up where it's not going to um, show in this white part, nothing up here will show, but you wanna still have room to be able to write whatever you wanna say as your thank you. Okay, so there's that. So there's that word. And then we're gonna stamp on the outside here on that label that says kindness matters. And let me tell you, it does matter, right? Aren't we so grateful for the kind people in our life? All right, so kindness matters. Let's ink that up. Move this out of the way. We'll stamp it on our label in the center. Make sure that I have enough ink on here, but that it's not oversaturated. See like how I oversaturated that one? I did it again, didn't I? Yeah. This one side must not, must have more ink than the other one does. And so when I'm pressing with the right, let's see how that looks. Mm, better. All right, let's try it. This is it, third time's a charm. So there is our kindness matters. It turned out pretty good. All right, we're closing that. We're done with our ink. Let's clean our last stamp. And then I will trim that side and we'll start assembling our card. No, it's actually really easy to make, but it does look like a wow. I think people will be very impressed with this card. You'll have to make one, Rita. You have to order you those meadow dies. I do have them linked in the description below, so it should be easy for you to find them. All right. And for the um, artist tape, I also link that in the description below so you can um, grab that. I have a tiny hair left that I missed the first time through. All right. So now look at how pretty with that yellow piece showing. Don't you think that makes, that just makes all the difference, I think. Adding that DSP inside. And it's gonna pop our little flower up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we want to lay this piece down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, all of these pieces can get glue and then right up until those three leaves on this one side. So I'm going to go ahead and flip and I'm going to put the glue on those. So all of these on the top branches, I'm going to put a dot of glue on all of these. And then on this higher branch, the top three can get. So we'll put this down now. And it's gonna go about right there. All right. So now for this piece, I don't wanna put glue where it's gonna go through. So I'm just gonna look underneath here and add a tiny hair of glue, press it down, hold it for a second for it to bond. Also here, I guess I didn't hold that long enough. There we go, now we got a good bond. And then on this little cluster at the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and put just a smidge and then on the stem. So there we go. There's our adhesive for that part. Now, we are also going to attach these two pieces. So this flower's kind of, kind of come off from the bottom to this side here. So once I know where I wanna place this and I wanna figure out where I want this piece to lay, probably right about there, maybe a little bit over. Yeah, I like that. Move this one over slightly. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my dimensionals and I'm gonna show you how I went about putting them on. So I lift them off and yes, this is dangerous for me putting these over here so that they don't make it everywhere. But I want to just make sure that I've stuck it in the place that I want it. So there's that one, right? I'm going to put a baby one underneath that little pod. 
I'm keeping them all in one spot because they have to end up in my trash can or I'll have a mess. All right, so there's the mini. Let's figure out where these are gonna go. We don't want them to show from the inside when we raise our card. We don't want any dimensionals to show in these open gaps. So we are gonna basically attach each part as we go, okay? So we're gonna start at the little top cluster and we're gonna put a mini. And I'm gonna pull the back off and put it over here. And we're gonna start with that one. So this is gonna go here like this. And so I am gonna go ahead and lay that one down. Now, right on this piece, I can put a large, regular size because they're half inch and they will house it. So I'm gonna put one here and then I'm gonna go ahead and let that flower. This one needs a mini because it's too small for the large, regular size dimensional. So I'm just gonna flip that back and tuck one underneath and then let it lay down. This piece here, I'm gonna also, I'm gonna fit a regular size one. So what you do is you basically start working your way down your card and sticking this underneath where they will hold but not show. So you're gonna attach them to the lattice themselves. So one at a time, you're gonna pull the backs off and start making your little way down. onto, there's my lattice piece, and then I'm gonna attach this. Now this one doesn't have anything, but I'm gonna put a small one in that corner. So we'll tack that under there. There we go. We're gonna put a regular, well, I'm gonna put a mini, I think, on both sides of that, because it's kind of in the gap. So we'll put one here for the top part of that leaf, and we'll put one at the bottom. And then for the actual stem, I'm gonna use some edges. So we'll go ahead and stick this one down. Stick that leaf to it. Now for this piece, I'm gonna grab my edge. You guys know how I use these edges. We're gonna put one, two, three. I don't know how many we'll need, but I'm gonna pull three off. Well, actually I just pulled two. So let's go ahead and pull the backs off and put them with these. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, John. All right, so we're gonna put one on this end here underneath this part where it doesn't show, okay? And then we're gonna put one on this end. I guess we only needed two. Also, where it's not gonna show right there on the end, on the, on the last piece here, and place it down. So there's our raised flower, and then we're gonna use three of these little guys, because you know I over-dimensionalize everything. <laughs> so we're gonna put three on our label, and then I'm gonna take my take your pick tool, and I'm gonna pull those off, and then I'm gonna start picking these guys up because I don't want them on my craft room floor. See how they're starting to fall off of there? I'm gonna stop, purge them, and then we'll pick up the rest. I have to pick them up on the take your pick tool because I cannot, I repeat, I cannot have them on my craft room floor because I will flip out. I'm gonna put all of them together and make sure that they get picked up. Yes. All right. Trash can they go. All right. So here is our words, kindness matters. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And then we're going to stamp. I know I've already put stuff down, but we're gonna stamp. I'm gonna show you, it's very forgiving. This is a fantastic little, if you guys know how I love splatter dots, you're gonna be like, what? This is a great splatter dot that you get in this free set. So I'm gonna grab my scrap paper. What did I do with that piece of scrap paper? Here we go. Make sure that I have it under there. Okay, so we'll grab our daffodil. We're gonna put a little set of splatters right there. A set over here, maybe in this corner. And then we're gonna put some over on this section and see how you can just work your way around your piece. I'm gonna put some right there. 
I'm gonna put some on this right there. It's a small splatter, so it works really easily tucked in different places. So just make your splatter how you want it to be. I'm gonna add a little bit there. All right, I'm happy with the amount of splatter. I'm gonna show that to you guys up close. There it is. Isn't that cute? All right, we don't need this anymore. We need our brushed brass butterflies and then we need our glue to adhere our flower section inside. All right, let's do the flower section first. All right, so we're gonna grab again, of course, you know, I love this, our um, silicone mat because messy me. So I'm gonna just put a very light and I'm gonna pull it. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue and then I just drag it up and into these sections. So a tiny little bit and then I drag. Let's see. See, I drag it to the parts that don't have any glue from the tip of this applicator. All right, I think I'm happy. That's plenty. I think it'll, I think it will stay. All right, make sure I have in that corner. So what I wanted to do on this one is I didn't want it to be right here where all the slats were. I wanted it where this three eighths inch slat piece was so that it would kind of hide it it would be there, you could see it if you were looking for it, but if you weren't looking for it, you just saw the front of the cart. So that's what we're gonna do again. So I'm gonna grab my tweezers. And then right about there, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna put it down, but I'm just gonna make sure that I'm in the right place, and I am. So we'll go ahead and put that there and press that into place. Isn't that so pretty on the inside? And then of course, you guys know, I have to use my adhesive remover because just in, just in case, oh, I did not mean to tear that piece off, but I can fix it. No one will know any better. There we go. I should have waited for it to dry before it got crazy. It's a very little small piece, so I know better. All right. And there is our inside, our outside. See how well it tucks underneath that piece. And then the final step, of course, is our brush ba brass butterflies. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Clem. Thanks, Malena. You guys are so sweet to me. All right. And then let's grab our, I like to use the pointy end for these for anything that's super flat like these butterflies are. So I'm gonna grab one of the larger ones and we're gonna place one of them right here on the lattice like it's swimming, like it's swimming, like it's flying <laughs> towards that flower. We're gonna put a baby one down here around that section and I'm gonna put a larger one up on the label. So how about right here? Actually, I'm gonna put it closer. I'm gonna put it in this corner. I'm gonna actually, if I can lift this one up, I'm gonna lift it and, and rotate it out. Come here. There he goes. All right, we're rotating that one out. All right, just changed its direction. I didn't have it too smushed that I couldn't move it. All right, and let's Put these guys back and the last final final step is our bow I don't want to miss that part so I used the um, Baker's twine essentials pack which you get black white vanilla crumb cake and gray I think it's granite my yeah I think it's gray granite so I'm just gonna cut about a six inch piece or so I don't know I'm just guessing you can see I love the twine. The least used is my crumb cake, and I think it's because I end up using linen thread, and it's almost the same color, so I hardly use that one. But we're gonna just tie um, a bow, and this is why I didn't wanna use too much, because we're gonna waste some of it. So we're, we made two bunny ears. We're gonna cross them in an X. The loop that's in the front, we're gonna bring it through that hole that we made by crossing them, and then I'm gonna Pull very slowly, not very hard. 
and I'm gonna hold on tight while I pull on both ends. A little bit at a time. I'm gonna get my my strings where I want them. I'm gonna get my loops where I want them. I'm gonna pull on my loops the way I want them. And then when they don't behave, I'm gonna use a mini glue dot to adhere this. <laughs> because twine doesn't like to behave. It's a bad, bad child. Okay, but it's so cute, right? Isn't that why we don't, um, why our little kids get away with everything because they're so cute. Okay, so it's, a twine is like a little child. Okay, so we're gonna grab a mini glue dot and I'm gonna find one, there we go. I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool if I can find it on my mess on my desk. And I like to ball it up with the tip until it's this little tiny ball. And then I will place it onto the knot on the back of my bow, pull it off of there, and then I will attach it down here onto the stem. And then I press it down and that way my bow lays exactly how I want it to. It has no choice but to comply. And then we're gonna trim those ends. So let me grab my ribbon scissors because I can cut very closely with that. So we're gonna do one and two all right let's get my mat out of the way i'm sure I'm, i've moved this mat all over the place and you guys are going ah oh. all right so there we go there we have it what do you guys think of this fantastic card isn't it great so we have used the beautifully happy stamp set and the meadow dies. And don't forget, tomorrow's video will show you how to use these meadow dies. And there'll be links in the description of tomorrow's video for three other videos that I have done um, with the meadow dies and the quiet meadow stamp set. So check those out. And if you do not own the bright DSP that comes in, you get two sheets of every color. Um, it's a great pack of paper, 40 sheets. You get two sheets of each pattern. There's two different patterns. And um, I, I have them, I think I have almost all of them. I think I have three or four of the colors this year. I always end up buying them a little bit at a time until I have all of them. But I hope that you've enjoyed this project and that you will make yourself a split cart lattice. Um, thank you for being here so much. I appreciate it. Again, if you don't mind subscribing and sharing my video with your friends, I would appreciate that so, so much. Thanks for being here, guys. And you can watch this replay later. It should be up on my channel. I appreciate you guys always being here, supporting me. I am um, so very blessed for those who follow me on my channel. So thanks for being here. I'll see you next Tuesday live again with another stamp set and another fun project. And um, keep checking my channel the rest of the week. I have videos again. And if you missed anything last week, you can catch up. Don't forget, I did do this card on Sunday, which was an easel card. If you haven't watched that video, check that out. And yesterday I showed you how to color. So check those out. And I will talk with you later. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping, guys!